Hey, kid. Welcome to the war. Picture, if you will, you're a Hollywood hack. For some of you, this will be easier than others. Yet despite a dearth of talent, inspiration, or aspiration, you inexplicably cranked out one of the all-time action ass kickers, 87 celluloid slaughter, Predator. The movie sets cinema as a blaze, quintupling its budget at the box office, and more importantly, serving as a centerpiece of rageaholic cinema 30 years fucking hence. But every boom eventually goes bust, and by 90, Arnold ain't returning your calls, absorbed as he is by far more artistic fare, like kindergarten fucking cop. The solution? Fuck it! Phone up Danny Glover! Anyone who said yes to that hairpiece ain't saying no to Predator fucking 2. And you heard right, bitch! I said Predator fucking 2! No cutesy post-millennial prequel up the poop shoot, not the Predator, not Predators, not aliens that identify as Predators, and certainly not Predator Armageddon, Revelations, Genesis, Exodus, or goddamn Deuteronomy. Capital P, blood red font, big fucking two. You want a jungle, jackass? How's about the concrete crags of late 90s LA? An open air petri dish where half the fucking block is perpetually one Rodney King bowel movement away from Crystal knocked. But fret thee the fuck not, for braving the urban blight is a badass with a badge. What Glover lacks in Arnold's greased up golem good look looks, he more than makes up for in sheer Danny goddamn Gloverness. Cause when he ain't cupping commie balls in Brazil's elections or crying about how it was Hillary's turn, nobody sweats or screams like Danny fucking Glover. I said put it down, asshole! Hey, Jerry! I'm gonna make you kiss my sweet ass! Ah, uh, but what effusive, florid fucking future might we be treated to after seven full years inculcated in 1990s era political correctness, you ask? Curbside slam poetry, roving LGBTQIA plus minus pound star symbol for boron sensitivity seminars? <laughs> Smell that cultural cohesion. No, it's not Detroit documentary footage. It's LA after being hit with a socialism stick for 75 fucking years. Meanwhile, the media, namely Morton Downey Jr. and some broad whose bouffant doubles as the Ocean Spray logo, do what any responsible journalist does and profit from the misery they originally incited. But with the melting pot going full crock pot, it ain't long before we get a visit from an old friend. Rocket launcher. The streets awash in Puerto Rican plasma. The riot cops held at bay by errant bullet spray as the motorcycle cop from Magnum Force bleeds behind enemy lines. Who among us has manly moves enough to contend with the cartel's cultural enrichment? How's about Danny Glover hanging out the driver's side of a Chevy Caprice with a bulletproof passenger's side while wielding a pistol the size of a Paris gun? Don't keep me suspicious, Danny boy! It has not been a nice day! Predator peering on, CeeDee Gonzalez and the rest of Los Lonely Boys book it on back to the building so they can get decked the fuck out in big boss man gear. But before he can get too old for this shit, it's time to set phasers to fucking flank. Hey, asshole! Having saved his copper compatriot from a 45 caliber class in cultural enrichment, Sergeant Sweat Generator impels the popos to pursue, while Pinche and the Cabrones return to Chateau Cholo to load up on California gun control and snort coke from a scorpion's ass. No, I did not make that up. <clears throat> Unlike LA gun control statistics. But before the mariachi mafia can sing the word corazon 50 fucking times, they're beset from above. <laughs> The police pursue, but stumble fucking a Fruit of the Loom factory instead. But then discount Danny Trejo interrupts the sweatshop samba and flees to the roof to go five rounds with a fucking predator and Danny Glover's goddamn hand howitzer. But to put it bluntly, they're not sending their 15th fucking best. Freeze! I said hold it! <laughs> Looking for the Latino commando, the picnic table was there to absorb the impact of his six-story belly flop. Outdoors. In a war zone. In a heat wave. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country... Yes. Then somehow not snap the fucking half like Kate Moss curling a car bumper. I am the table! 
After which, we learn the same sweat sponge that was doing a handstand and a hail of bullet spray has an ass backward case of acrophobia. I'm hallucinating space Jamaicans now, but the scene inside ain't much better as the invisible assailant evidently elected to splatter paint with some sapien spaghettios. After being chewed a second, somehow even sweater your asshole by his pimple face fucking superior who would have preferred the Federales handle the minority murderin', Glover does the dignified thing and unleashes the most violent Category 5 Spurg Cyclone since the Great American Shriek-In of 2016. Now get back to your cage at Alvarado! <laughs> oh, fuck! Back at Keystone Cop HQ, Harrigan's getting goat fucked by Clark Kent's dad for doing his damn job, whereupon we're introduced to Red Herring antagonist for the evening, fresh from a motorcycle accident that literally fucking killed him, Gary Goddamn Busey! Yeah, Captain Pilgrim, Peter Keys. That's well, good to meet you. Don't mean to be stepping on your toes. I wish I could tell you more. <laughs> God, Gary, what are you whitening your veneers with? Laundry detergent? Your teeth are so white, Jordan Peele refuses to fucking cast them. Effective immediately. Federal task force will be investigating criminal activities involving the trafficking and distribution of controlled substances. And you will extend him your full cooperation. Which means you're cutting off my dick and shoving it up my ass. Glover, you work for the government. I'm sure you've got plenty of room. We all have a job to do. Now, I'm sure we can respect each other's situation and act responsibly. Cooperation is my middle name. About what I'd expect to hear from the man who starred in Death Race 4, but Busey ain't alone in inciting the acrimony of his fucking fellows. Ladies, germs, bacteria that identify as germs, I give you the most annoying man in the world that is not employed by CNN. So me and my partner bolt up the stairs. Somebody is screaming bloody murder. You, you gotta, you, you gotta hear this. You gotta hear this. If you find this as irritating as I do, take solace in the fact that this is an action film, this is Bill Paxton, and by God, I wouldn't get too fucking attached. This motherfucker's birth sign is a skull and crossbones. Fortunately for the home viewing audience, Elena DeGeneres is fin to reach out and inappropriately touch somebody. Looks like he's putting the moves to Leona. <laughs> His first big mistake. Well, oh, 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 oh. By the pussy. I guess James Cameron was done with those characters anyway, but as we're soon to learn after a sex scene more pointless than skydiver helmets, it turns out the Tijuana Triad is nothing next to the true criminal menace of modern day Los Angeles. A gaggle of ganja smoking Eddie Gordos. <laughs> Are you doing now, man? You're crazy! <laughs> ah, who could forget the roving Papa Shango posse of 1997? Another bullseye for the fortune tellers in fucking Hollywood. But before both ethnicities can get wrecked by rooftop Koreans, someone else shows up with a laser sight and a stiffy. <laughs> Slices, he dices, he murders the Bob Marley Mafia so fast white stoners don't even have time to pretend to like their music. But before the feds can fuck up the crime scene, Danny Glover goes over it with a fine-toothed gore mop. What the fuck happened? Shit! This was a voodoo ritual, I've seen it all before. They took his heart out. They spot a plot device in the vent, but before they can snag it... This is a restricted area. I want it cleared immediately. You got a big nose, and you're sticking it too far in my business. The next time you cross me, you're gonna turn up missing. Come on, Busey, who'd believe a black father would go missing? Blinded by Busey's bullshit and denture bleach, Harrigan sits down with his walking body bag of a buddy and sets up an insurance policy. Now, right. tomorrow, start a tale on keys. Everything he does, everywhere it goes. Who knows, you might just get lucky. Lieutenant, luck is my specialty. Now, I'll be unstoppable. Yeah, I bet it is. 
But Danny Glover, being Danny goddamn Glover, he sends his Dago dipshit of a partner back to comb over the crime scene and play finders stealers with a predator's murderware, which ends about as well as you'd expect in a film with two Mexican main characters. Danny boy. Mike? Oh, 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 please no! Oh, oh. After which Glover gets his ass caved in by Captain Craterface five fucking seconds after which he's already beelining for Busey to push his shit in and pimp slap his own fucking forearm. What you want with this asshole? He's a dead man. The concept of what you're dealing with is way over your head. Bang. You don't know what you're dealing with. Flanked by Flunky Number One and a man Kotaku and Buzzfeed inform me is in fact a walking swastika, it turns out Busey's about to BTFO a bitch. I'll take care of him. No. Let him go. Last thing we need right now is a hashtag no one will unironically use in a year. Paxton and Harrigan harumph their way out of HQ, having hatched a plot to hold court with the leader of the Koosh Cabal, only for Snoop Lion's hashmobile to pull up, proving in the process that pot-related driving deaths may well not be an inflated statistic. King will ever see you now. Easy kid, put your gun away. After kicking his walking corpse of a partner to the curb so he can compare skull bonds with a cast of cool runnings, his partner stumbles off to get fitted for a pair of pine pajamas while Hardigan holds court with the Duke of Dank. Lizzie, you on top to me. I want some information. About the one that's doing all the killing, Aya. He killed your people. Now mine. You see, it's always the same. There's no stopping what can't be stopped. No killing what can't be killed. You can't see the eyes of the demon. Until him come calling. After an accent duel with DJ Combo, turns out the Predator is not in fact fucking Jamaican, which the audience knew two titty fucking movies ago. But bitch, this is an 80s action film, albeit one released in 1990, and we all know it's an excuse to see Baron Samedi get space shanked by a fucking Predator. You're welcome, Ghost in the Shell. Still, the cow of a cottonmouth can pull this one out. Come on, King Willy! Swing that sword cane and fillet this fishnet wearing fagaloon like a black forest ha- Oh! Fatality. While the Predator polishes his cranial Christmas ornaments, Hardigan heads to the graveyard to rock out to Typo with his glow stick wielding goth girlfriend when he recognizes a Christmas decoration of an entirely different variety, which somehow makes him even sweatier. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the Mr. Rogers trolley, Helena heads to Home Depot with Detective Dipshit when they spot one of the suspiciously multicultural street gangs from goddamn Death Wish hassling a random civilian. But before they can report him to Twitter for hate speech, he pulls his piece, at which point everyone on the subway gets a lesson in the effectiveness of California gun control legislation. Okay, everybody, just take a deep breath. Loosen your sphincters. We don't need any rush hour Rambos there. But as you'll recall from the first fucking film, wherever a human holding a weapon is, like a California congressman with an impending embezzlement investigation, the Predator is on it like desperation on BuzzFeed. It's at this point the film transmogrifies into an Aphex Twin video, and the Predator commences with the murderin'. <laughs> Flickering lights and fucking slow-mo. The shaky cam of early 90s music videos. Spurging the fuck out beneath the inexplicable subway strobes, doubtless as sloppy rave sluts below dope fumes and flabby armed ecstasy to the dulcet strains of Euro trash techno, like Brian Singer in a bathhouse hot tub, The Predator Strikes. Introducing us all in the process to the 18th rule of 80s action. To cast Bill Paxton is to kill Bill Paxton. Come on, motherfucker! Let's dance! <laughs> 
Sergeant Sassy Latina leads the pistol pack and civilians who, for plot-related reasons, didn't fucking fire at the thing to safety, but when she goes back for her fucking partner, she gets an intergalactic lesson in curiosity. That is, until the Predator engages his Kermit Gosnell vision and foresees a Supreme Court case in his fucking future. <laughs> the Slatch Trap after seeing her turkey baster baby, but Danny Glover soon learns his junior detective and his dome were not so fucking fortunate. after an hour and four fucking minutes that you can basically spot the damn thing if you look for the fucking ripples even the audience can see, Danny Glover goes after the asshole when he's cornered by Glanderson Pooper. Harrigan! More victims! More mutilation! Fuck you! You are fake news. With foot pursuit proving fruitless, he flies into his eggshell blue cuckmobile and follows the fucker. But so distracted is he by the city hunter scaling a sky rise with his buddy's spinal column slung over his shoulder, he fails to reckon with his deadliest foe by far, California drivers. <laughs> Perched atop the Eastern Columbia building with freshly plucked people parts dripping plasma to the asphalt below, the Predator then provides his official rebuttal to perhaps the manliest sequence of Schwarzenegger's career. Bitch, you know exactly what comes next. <laughs> I'm coming day and night. Meanwhile, Danny Glover sits down for a piping hot bowl of exposition stew with Gary Busey and the Gamergate guy. Ten years ago, one of his kind stalked and eliminated an elite special forces crew in Central America. Liquid nitrogen. You're not gonna kill his asshole, you're gonna freeze him. Captain Comey hatches a daring plan. We're 60s sci-fi spacesuits to stay invisible while you fire frozen fucking farts at him while luring him into space slavery with a steak dinner. What could go wrong but fucking everything? Needless to say, shit goes sideways faster than an Asian orgy. Bodies fly, fart guns jam, bullets whiz impotently past eight foot tall aliens, nondescript space lasers split sternums in fucking twain. Who in all of humanity can withstand the assault of invincible outer space bullshit? The FBI, the CIA, the ASPCA, try Danny Glover with a goddamn grenade launcher. His cloak rendered unusable in the deluge, Glover goes to town, raining 10mm Oakland hors d'oeuvres on the asshat, but just as he gets the goof against the ropes, he drops a stitch. The first and most important rule of Rageaholic cinema. Rocket launcher. Glover goes down in a heap, his flak jacket reduced to molten Kevlar. He stumbles for position, the Predator in hot pursuit, more meat in his face than an average fucking weekend for Danny Glover. But as the Predator pulls ever closer and proceeds with the kill, he forgets that the first rule of 80s action has a sequel. Shotgun! <laughs> Shotgunned in 
neon shit lets the city hunter collapses on the freezer floor, unable to answer Harrigan's buckshot rebuttal. Yet his infinite possibilities present themselves from freezing the fucker as planned to covering him into cutlets like he fucking should. Danny Glover is unable to resist the siren song of simple curiosity and unmask the motherfucker in all her pristine Pelosi splendor. <sighs> You are one ugly mother. This is Armageddon. Bitch, this is nothing. He dated Whoopi Goldberg. While Pelosi gets to gun grab and Harrigan huffs and puffs on the meat freezer floor. Bruised and beaten, his firearm hanging limply at his side, you know, where it can do the most good, Glover appears profoundly fucked. And that's where- Holy fuck, it's Gary Busey! Guess who's back? Arrogant. It's between me and him. But if you, like most functioning fucking adults, said to yourself, now how's he gonna drop a predator with a glorified fucking flatulence launcher? Well. <laughs> You won't be attending that hat convention in July. The Predator hits Busey so hard you'd think he was a fucking curb, but if the city hunter thought he was out of the concrete jungle just yet, he failed to reckon with Danny Glover, his desert eagle of death, and his crippling fear of heights. Face. This show move. Clinging to his tricep harder than an ultimate warrior tassel, having triggered the nuke attached to her tibia, it appears Pelosi has the upper hand. And hey, about that! Suffering a fucking forearm deficit, the Predator employs nebulous neon bullshit to cauterize his space stump while Danny Glover shimmies down the only pipe that wasn't attached to another man. And if you wondered how any organic being, armored or otherwise, could withstand cryo-freeze, dismemberment, multiple gunshot wounds, and a goddamn grenade facial, all while breathing atmosphere it isn't acclimated to, the answer, my friends, is fucking simple. SPACE STEROIDS! <laughs> Come the fuck how Glover gives pursuit, confronting his fear of heights by sliding his sweat-soaked ass down an elevator shaft, but when he follows his quarry through an inexplicable hole in the sub-basement, he hits the mother load. A motherfucking spaceship with an open airlock. You know, to zip lock in all that alien atmosphere or some shit. Amblin is ass through a dry ice dungeon. After admiring his skull collection, he soon finds himself forehead to forehead with his fucking nemesis. <laughs> Make all the unfavorable comparisons to Arnold you like. I don't remember Schwarzenegger having a spaceship shank off armed only with a fucking frisbee. <laughs> Boy, Harrigan, breathe the free air, my fucking friend. Congratulations, a winner is you. <laughs> okay, who's next? Balls of brass. Polished to the nth degree. Preparing to break out the Vaseline for an alien airtight, the Predators instead make like reverse Californians and give him a goddamn gun. A fucking flintlock, in fact, and one that's a reference to the Dark Horse Predator comics, in case you are wondering. But lest this be mistaken for a gesture of intergalactic fellowship, let me remind you, these are slatch face fucking murder aliens, and you best get the piping hot fuck out of here.
Get another chance. City Hunter dispatched. Other Predators, a plot hole for a lesser fucking franchise. Cut, print, Predator. Moral of the movie, if you're a sequel, sack up and be one. Because while modern movie sequels, prequels, and dequels are dancing around what the fuck they actually are, Predator 2 has a ball sack like a beanbag chair. So kick-ass, in fact, it had to carve 20 entire minutes out of the overall runtime to avoid accruing an NC-17 certificate. Dipshits who dismiss the follow-up as a fucking failure, I hereby officially place on fucking notice. Because once you shelve the fan-fuck elitism and Asperger's sin, Syndrome, what you're left with is both an excellent action film and a sequel that'll stand the test of time till long after we finish cringing our way through the final frames of Alien vs. Weinstein. I'm Razor Fist! God fucking speed!